Hi, I'm Bob Dodge with Artemis Gallery. I started Artemis Gallery 20 plus years ago, and like most of you, I started out as a collector. And as a collector, my objective was to find those needles in a haystack and uncover treasures that others might have missed. So one of the things that I learned in the process is that you really need to use all of your senses to determine whether what you're looking at is ancient or not. The first thing we're going to talk about this afternoon is using our eyes to help us determine is something ancient or is it a fake. Um, recognize that in the antiquity business there are lots of fakes. In some categories, dare I say Chinese antiquities, the fakes outnumber real probably 20 to 1 or maybe 99 to 100. So you always have to be on the lookout for good fakes and use your senses to identify those. So using our eyes, what are we going to look at? So one of the first things I like to do when I'm looking at a piece of ancient pottery is let's look at the surface. So here is a representative pre-Columbian jar. And so I would look at this and I'd look for signs that this thing is not authentic. So one of the, one of the mistakes most collectors come into uh, collecting, they want this to be real. And you've got to change your mindset. You want to prove that this is right, starting out with the assumption that it's a fake. So if we do that, we want to look at all the signs that um, convinces us that this is real or the signs that reinforces our initial assumption that this thing is a fake. So I'm looking at this and one of the first things I see, we've got manganese deposits. So the question, is this manganese or is this paint? In uh, creating forgeries, one of the uh, major techniques that forgers use is they will take paint and they will splatter it on a piece to mimic manganese. Now manganese is a naturally occurring mineral that leaches out of the ground. And when manganese attaches itself to a vessel, it doesn't splatter on like paint, it grows, it's organic, it blooms. So a lot of people will call it manganese blooms. So what you're looking for, do the black specks on the thing that you're looking at, the piece of pottery, does it look like paint splatter or does it look like manganese? So on this one, one of the things that I notice, all of these manganese blooms are directional. So that tells me immediately we've got a problem here. Manganese does not flow from dripping water or splattered paint. And all of these lines tell me this is, uh, this is applied paint. So what does real manganese look like? So I've got a vessel right here and a manganese bloom looks like these little tiny flowers. They're blooms, they grow, they've got little arms and legs. Now one of the things that we do with manganese to prove that it's manganese is we use hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide um, will react with manganese and what it does when hydrogen peroxide in a condensed uh, version. So this is the, the type of hydrogen peroxide you'd buy at a, at a hairstylist, not the type you would get at uh, your local supermarket. So it's very concentrated. I think this is 40% hydrogen peroxide. So if you apply hydrogen peroxide to a manganese bloom, it will bubble, it will fizz. So I put that right there. And if you can see very closely, you've just got an intense amount of bubbles going on. So that is what manganese should do. Now, if I apply that same hydrogen peroxide to these paint splatters, not a thing happens. It's just gonna sit there and do nothing. So in this case, you see it's sitting there, not absorbing, not bubbling, nothing. So what else can we do to test whether or not this is paint or manganese? So another chemical that should be in your arsenal is acetone. Now, acetone is used to remove paint. So what we do, again, using our Q-tip, we can take our Q-tip, apply it, and black. So manganese does not come off with a Q-tip. Paint comes off with a Q-tip. So here's another vessel. 
similar type of paint splatters. And in this case, we can take almost all of this surface paint off using acetone. So what is happening here? All right, paint comes off, big uh, splotch where I've hit it. So that shows us that this was painted after it was fired. So if pottery is fired uh, with the paint on it, you can take acetone to it and you can rub until the cows come home and nothing will happen. So take an ancient pot, put it on the painted section, comes off clean, nothing comes off. Okay, what else do we look for? Using our eyes, okay? One thing we look for are their root marks on the pottery. So here is a prime example of a piece of pottery that has liberal root marks. Here's another one. So what happens, this pottery is sat in the ground for in some cases a uh, thousand years, 1500 years, and it's buried with plants and roots get around it and roots get down into it. So the roots create these wonderful root marks and that's a wonderful sign that this thing has been in the ground for thousands of years. Now there's always a caveat, the fakers are very clever. So here is a really fine fake. Um, when I saw this in uh, the collector's house in uh, Idaho, I was at first convinced this was authentic. It had everything going for it. It had a crackled surface. It had deep deposits. And if you look carefully in the metallic sheen, you see what appear to be root marks. But what the fakers have been able to do is they will make a, a vessel like this and they will place the little interior rinds of lemons and oranges, the little strings that you get, and they place it on top of the paint and there's acid in there. And the acid will create these wonderful little lines and make it look like root marks, but they're not. So one of the things that we look for, are there too many signs of age? So here is a prime example. The faker that made this did everything to convince the buyer that this thing was right. It has a metallic sheen that you find in authentic Greek pottery. It's got a crackled surface that you often find in South Italic pottery. It's got root marks. It's got deposits. And after a while you think, wait a minute, is there too much going on here? So the adage that something uh, is too good to be true, that's not always the case. This was absolutely authentic, almost absolutely perfect, doesn't have nearly the signs of age that this one does, but this one's fake. The way I proved that this one was fake, I did a TL test, so there are a couple of small holes. But the, the thing that convinced me at first that this was probably not right was just the overage of signs of age. The person really went out of their way to convince the buyer that this thing was right. If I were buying or selling an ancient plate like this, probably a seven to $10,000 example, one of the first things I would do would be to clean this off. And it's real easy to clean off. So why would you leave this on if it's authentic? You probably wouldn't, you would have cleaned it off. So they left it on or applied it to make it look old. So summary, use your eyes to help identify what's right and what's wrong. Stay out of trouble, find experts to help you. This is Bob with Artemis, thanks.